I'm here with Gary Jackson in Gary's Barber Shop in Hollywood, County Down, Northern Ireland. That's a cross right. Uh, Gary's had 30 years of experience in barbering. As you can see by his dress, I consider him to be a fashion icon. And up until yesterday evening, Gary was actually a model at the Belfast Fashion Week. Is that right? That's correct. All right, yeah, yeah, you're doing good. So Gary, I just have a standard question because I'm very uh, fascinated where everyone started in barbering. So what was your inspiration and motivation to become a barber from the beginning? Um, I, I, I was always, I mean, I'm an old punk, so I've always been very uh, sort of hair orientated. Uh, I used to cut a lot of my mate's hair when we were younger, but I never ever thought about it as, as any sort of... Uh, you know, career or anything like that. But uh, long story short, I lived in London for six years. I was a barman. I came back home to Northern Ireland in 1987 and I was at a bit of a loss. I didn't know what to do with myself. And um, I was actually in the barbers one day and getting a haircut and I just literally had a, like a, a light bulb moment. I was just looking around at the guys cutting the hair, chatting away to their customers and I thought, bingo, I, I could do this. So that's, that's basically it in a nutshell. I, uh, I asked the guy who, who worked, it was a, a barbershop called Zags, and I asked the guy called Rooley, uh, did he ever teach anybody? And he said to me, look, we don't need anybody. He says, but what I'll do for you, he says, if you want to come, keep your job, he says, come in to my shop on your day off and bring somebody with you, your brother, one of your mates, whatever, and uh, I'll talk you through the haircuts. So I did this for about six months. I literally grabbed everybody I could think of, everybody I knew, and uh, I just begged, borrowed, and stole to get them into the shop. And uh, that, was, that was how I started off. I was then very, very fortunate. I went to another barber shop called the Continental Barber Shop uh, in Great Victoria Street in Belfast. And the guy that owns it, he's a second generation barber called Ted Johnson, and he is a top notch barber. He is, he is a superb barber and I was very, very fortunate. I told him, I didn't, I didn't give him any old flannel, I just told him what I'd been doing and uh, he took me on as his, his trainee. Okay, perfect. So. perfect. You said um, in that introduction that you were a punk rocker. Yeah. What kind of styles are you specialising in personally in this shop in 2016, March? Well, we're, we're a community barber shop. And uh, we, we literally look after everybody from, I think our youngest customer is six months old. Uh, you can check out the video of the, the six month old child getting their haircut on our, on our YouTube channel. But uh, six months right through to, to 96. So we, we cater for everybody. Uh, what the most popular haircuts are, of course, fades. That goes without saying, it's the, it's the haircut of the moment, isn't it? In Northern Ireland. Because there's talk in London that that's kind of drifting out and it's becoming a lot softer. Yeah, it is. Uh, the longer haircuts are starting to sort of edge their way back in. But, um, you know, amongst the, amongst the young sort of, the young guys, uh, the fade would still be, would still be very popular. Okay. And tell me a little bit about the design of this shop. Because, you know, again, you were just saying that this is kind of like a community-based barber shop. Tell me the full process that went into the design. Is it calculated or was it random? Well, I, I'm here now in, in Hollywood looking after everybody for ooh, coming up in 27 years. So the shop has sort of kind of evolved into, into, into what it is now. I've recently just given the place a bit of a, a refurbished, my nice Belmont, my original Belmont chairs. Um, I took away a beam that was here and put in the uh, or sorry, took away the pillar that was here and put in a nice wee beam which opens up the shop a bit. And we're pretty much up to capacity now. We're, we're pretty much full capacity. The, the eight Belmonts are all, are all rocking and rolling. Okay. And tell me what you'd say separates you from other barber shops in the area. Well, I mean, anybody that knows me, any of my customers that know me, they know that I'm, I'm passionate, that I, I, I come to work every day with a smile on my face. I love my job, you know. 99% of my customers are good as gold and I have made so many genuine lifelong friends and I through my work. So, you know, you don't want to sound cheesy, you don't want to sound sort of condescending, 
but I actually do like people and I like the people that come into my shop. And I always impress upon my staff, treat people the way they that you want to be treated yourself. Give people respect. Doesn't matter who they are, doesn't matter what they do for a living, doesn't matter their, their creed, their anything else. Everybody deserves respect. Definitely. Okay. And Gary's Barbershop is quite hands-on uh, with a festival and an organisation called the Hollywood Harmony Festival. Tell me how you intend, to, tell me a little bit about the festival and tell me how you intend to incorporate barbering into this festival. Well, it's, it's my, my rock and my, my best buddy, my, my wife, Mary, who, uh, who, who organises the festival. She's the brains of the outfit. She does everything uh, concerning the festival. What I do is I, I help her in any way I can. So I would, um, I would um, get sponsorship from my customers. I really like to incorporate barbering into it. It's very much a community. Um, the, the whole festival is very community oriented. So I'm in the ideal place for telling people about it, for drumming up interest in it, for publicizing it, for getting sponsorship. Uh, a lot of my lovely customers would be directors of companies, CEOs, and they know that it's a community thing about putting something back into Hollywood, the local community. So they're on board for it. Uh, we don't get any public funding from any government bodies. So uh, it, it works an absolute treat. From the barbering point of view, I, I would love to have a wee pop-up barber shop at it, you know. I would like to be doing a few heads while we're, while we're, uh, where everybody's enjoying the music. Okay, if you like. And also, with, in terms of sponsorship, you do something with a local football team, is that right? Well, that's a kids team. Okay. They're, uh, they're, only, they're only young kids and uh, uh, I, uh, I have Gary's Barbershop in the front of their shirts. Okay. <laughs> it's great to see the kids sort of getting out, kicking the ball about and, and uh, I, I just like to be at the heart of the community. The community have paid my mortgage for the last 30 years. So sometimes it's just nice to give something back. And last, in the introduction, I said that you, you was a catwalk model up until last <laughs> the Belfast um, Fashion Week. Tell me a little bit about this experience and how you was seeked out, if you like, to do that. It was my birthday a fortnight ago, Larry. Now, believe it or not, man, I know you're going to be shocked, but I was actually 53 years old. So last September, I got, uh, I got uh, a call from a, a lovely lady called Kathy Martin who uh, looks after, she's a model agency and she has a PR company and she organises Belfast Fashion Week. So this random call asked me what I like to do a bit of modelling and of course I just sort of went into a wrinkle. I thought, what, modelling? I'm 52 years old, what do you mean modelling? So I spoke to Cathy and she said, look, you're the guy they're looking for, for a big campaign, for a big shopping centre, Forestside Shopping Centre, and they want you to be on billboards, they want you to be on the sides of buses, uh, and I just thought, well, my first concern was, I said, Kathy, is it cheesy? Because if it's cheesy, I'm never going to do it. My mates would never let me live it down. They would tear the back out of me. So once she had sort of assured me that it was a bit eccentric, a bit quirky, I just liked the idea and I thought it couldn't do the, the Gary's Barbershop brand any harm at all. It would, be, uh, it would be very good positive publicity. So then I thought that was a one-off. I thought that was the end of it. And then the next thing... Uh, the newspapers and the local uh, radio station here were getting in touch with me saying um, that Belfast Fashion Week was coming up and uh, that for the first time ever they were going to have a show at the, at the, at the, the event called uh, 50 Over 50s. So they're putting over 50s models on the stage, modeling clothes, and uh, I was asked to be part of that. So of course I said, yep, I'll walk down a catwalk. I'll strip my stuff, why not? It's been a, it's been a crack. So, yeah, that was, that was it. Yeah, and I think it's well deserved because when I've seen you out at events, it's like you just sit there and I don't actually see anyone else. I just see you and it's not because you're being flash. It's just that you've got it. So, yeah, it's a good well, choice. You know, as I said before, Ted Johnson, the, the, the Continental Barber Shop, you know, his father would have been really old school barber. Now back in the day, back in the 1960s, a lot of the barbers, they all came out of a very famous barber shop in Belfast. Uh, 
and uh, they all individually then opened their own shops, but they were all still friendly with each other. All the players, all the really, really top barbers, but they all used to socialise together, and they were all very, very dapper. You know, their little Clark Gable moustaches, really? and, and they, were, they were slick. And I think, I think that's something good, you know. Uh, your barber, your tailor, we, we are gentlemen's gentlemen, and I think that you have to sort of make a little bit of an effort, Larry, you know. Indeed. And going back to barbering, tell me your one greatest moment in barbering over your 32 years career. Oh, I don't know, mate. That's, that's, that's impossible to ask. What really gives me a, a, a real kick is when one of my customers comes in and says that they've just finished their course of chemo, that they're in remission and that they need a proper haircut because their hair's starting to grow back. That's, that's what does it for me. It's all about my customers. It's, it's, uh, I've, I've had... 30 excellent years and I, I wouldn't, if I could turn back the clock, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. It's, it's been a fabulous journey and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And the whole thing now, I mean, what a great time to be a barber. You know, these kids that are coming up that are absolutely smashing it. Uh, what a wonderful time to be a barber because of course, 30 years ago when I trained to be a barber, it, it certainly wasn't cool. It certainly wasn't trendy. I mean, the barber shop had gone into terminal decline. But we're now back and, uh, you know, if you look at the 1920s, it was a golden era, era for the barbershop, the 1950s. Well, now it's cool to be a barber. It's a good time to be a barber. So I paid my dues over 30 years and now it's time for me to have a bit of fun. And I think that's what barbers should do, is have some fun. You know, let's, let's not take ourselves too seriously, guy. Okay? You know, we're not reinventing the wheel. But we are looking after people, and that's what it's all about. So Gary, as I understand it, you was a non-believer in social media until you had an apprentice come along. Uh, tell me, now that you've embraced it, what a difference it's made to your business from before you was a non-believer. Social media, I never thought I had the energy for it. My wife, Mary, uh, was saying to me for years, you need to get on the social media. And I was going like, I don't have the energy for it. I, I just, if you want to do it, you knock yourself out. But uh, I did get enlightened after bringing in a trainee who knew his way around social media, who had people queuing out the door for him because he was tagging them and for people to come and practice on. And uh, the, 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 the scales were taken off my eyes. So now it has made a massive difference to our business. We have a fully full capacity shop now, as I say, the eight chairs are all on the go. Uh, we've employed a couple more people. Our business is up. We're getting a lot of people traveling to us from far and wide, uh, especially to do with the beards. An awful lot of young guys out there who have grown beards for the first time, maybe don't know how to maintain them, need a few pointers. Uh, but yeah, and we're, 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 we're spreading our, our, our sort of you know, we're, we're, we're reaching out to an awful lot of people now that we wouldn't have done uh, if it wasn't for social media. And then the whole thing with, um, with the modelling, I mean, that's come about through the social media. Um, so yeah, it's all good, it's all positive. We're, we're using it for a very, you know, as I say, we're, we're having fun. We, we genuinely don't take ourselves very seriously. We like to engage with our customers. We like to reach out to them, regardless of where they are in the world. Uh, my first birthday message a fortnight ago was from a young guy who, who has lived in Australia for the last three or four years. I've been cutting his hair since he was a wee boy. Uh, he was straight on wishing me a happy birthday, which was lovely. So yeah, it's all good. It's all positive from, from where I'm sitting. Okay. So that experience started from a, an apprentice. In terms of education, I know you're not uh, big into the master classes and one day workshop, two day workshops. Tell me why you choose just to work in the local colleges and you don't do master classes. It's not, I have nothing against master classes. I think they're wonderful. I think the guys that are going out, putting all their time and their energy into those master classes are fabulous. Uh, I really do. Uh, but my own, from my own point of view, um, I like to put my energy into the shop. Uh, come a Sunday, I'm busted. Uh, I like to spend time sort of with my wife, going for Sunday lunch, um, going to see my grandchildren, um, and just and just chilling out. You know, I just I just don't have the, the energy for that. But when it comes to the local college, I think it's good to um, 
to maybe put a little back bit, a little bit back in, in, into there as well. And uh, that's something that I'm working on at the minute. I'm thinking of doing master classes in, well, I am going to be doing master classes in our local college here in, uh, in Belfast. Because I'm sure there's a few uh, haircuts in your head and in your hands that a lot of people can't do. Maybe something like the Teddy Boy roll or a Mohican and cuts like that, you know? Well, the 80s was the time of, uh, I mean, we all know that the, the 80s was the, the decade that good taste forgot. But there was lots and lots and lots of variety when it came to hairstyles. I mean, we, we had the, fam the, the, the famous uh, Chris Waddle haircut, the, some people would call it a mullet. Uh, you had all the rocket bully styles, you had uh, a great variety of haircuts. Uh, probably the, the flat top had a, had a massive, I mean, I was probably, back in the 80s, I was probably doing maybe 15 or 20 flat tops a day. So, uh, yeah, I mean, those, those are the haircuts that, uh, that, that need to be, you know, they're classics. So yeah, the classics, I mean, everything goes around, comes around. You can give it different names, you can, you can put it in a different context, you can, but they're classics. And they're classics because they're classic. So yeah, uh, I, I, I can do all that stuff and I can pass that on. Okay, so as you said, you've been kind of three decades. Do you kind of, there must be a point now that you must be getting bored or fed up with the trade, is that right? Not for a, not for a, a microsecond, Larry. Like, never get fed up with it. I love it. It's all about people. It's all about people. You know, I probably know 70, 75% of our customers by their first names. And it's all about people. My darling wife, Mary, uh, I think she would love to get me sort of retired and out of the game and going to travel the world and do all the stuff like that. But uh, I think there's, I think there's uh, another year or two of me yet before I hang the scissors up and put the flat top comb back in the drawer. I think there's another wee while to go yet. Okay, so it looks like barbering's brought a lot of happiness to you, spiritually and mentally. Obviously, it's provided a, a nice living for you and your family. Yeah. What words of advice or practical tips and tricks could you give to maybe a young man uh, starting his journey into barbering to have the happiness and success that you have? Okay. Get yourself in a good workplace, somewhere where you're going to learn all the basics, all the fundamentals. Uh, remember that the customer is king. They're the guys who put food on your table. They're the guys who, who pay your mortgage. Uh, and get in and learn. And if you get somebody who's a good mentor, hang on their every word. Live it, breathe it. Just soak yourself in it, immerse yourself in it, and be the best that you can be. And, uh, you know, just, just, just be cool, just be cool. As I say, we're, we're, we're looking after people, we're enriching people's lives. We're making them feel better about themselves. Somebody comes into my shop, I want that person to leave my shop feeling better about themselves. And that, that's, that's, that's a gift from the gods. That, that is a wonderful privilege that we have. And uh, it, it is the best career for me and for lots and lots of other young people, so just enjoy it. Just enjoy it and have fun. Okay. And keep your customer happy. Keep your customer happy, absolutely. And his son, and his grandson, and his brother, and his uncle, because they're the, they're, you know, that's what it's all about, community. Okay. Gary, thanks for sharing your experience as a barber with me. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will also find it very interesting. And let's go to the Belfast, no, sorry, is it, no, it is the Belfast. Today is, today is a very special day. Tell us about this special day. When I was 30 years ago, when, when I was starting out, or over 30 years ago when I was starting out, I could never have imagined today, you know? We're going down to a funky venue called the OES Centre, and we're bringing together 300 barbers from all over Ireland. I could never have imagined that on a professional basis or on any other basis. I could never have imagined bringing 300 barbers together. So, uh, you know, big respect to Gary Spence. He is, uh, he is doing, he, he's bringing everybody together. He's bringing the community together. So I am thoroughly looking forward to today, to seeing a lot of old friends and to make, making a lot of new ones, Larry. Good, okay, let's do it. Okay, mate, let's Thank do it. Very, mm. Thank you very much. Listen, it's my pleasure, Larry. Thank you very much.